Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome back and welcome to the month of June. It is the first weekend in June and it's so glad. It's I'm so glad. It's so great, I meant to say. Um, it's so great to have you here. Thanks so much for joining. If this is your first time to catch the broadcast, uh, welcome. My name is Rane and um, I am the host of this little segment I do called From the Editor's Desk. It is such a pleasure to have you here this morning. So if you if you have a minute, grab a cup of coffee, I'll pull up a chair, just take a moment to kick back for a while because we are going to catch up after all that's been going on. And there's been so much happening in this last week, even since you saw me last. Um, I've been on uh, vacation. I've been traveling a little bit and um, got back on Monday, got back just before the month started. And of course, uh, school is out. School is out for lots of our kiddos. We are done with the school year. For those of you that are doing year-round school, perhaps you're approaching your summer break. But um, it's that time of year where our kids get excited. And unfortunately, we had kind of a rocky end to the school year um, with the shootings that have gone on in our world, and especially one that affected my state of Texas here uh, in Uvalde. We had um, the loss of those children and their two teachers. And so that's that's kind of a rough way to end the school year. I know that's been on top of mind for a lot of parents, for a lot of friends, and I'm sure for a lot of the kids ending their school year like this. So while we honor and we mourn and we grieve with the parents who have lost their children, whose lives are changed forever, we realize that this is the world we live in. We need to take steps to do all that we can to ensure that our children feel safe and feel secure as best as we can, what is within our circumstances to handle. Because of course, we can't control circumstances like that. So a lot of parents are thinking about how to have these conversations with their kids, how to talk to them, and how to engage them so that even though it was a bumpy end to the school year, we can go into the summer season and have fun because that's what our kids should be doing while at school or during the summer season is enjoying themselves and having fun. So today's show is going to be geared all around kiddos, around things that make them happy, how we can encourage them through stories and share a couple of things. So I have a couple of things that I love to share for parents or even for kids who are watching of some fun things that they can do. So we're going to be talking this uh, this month about summer fun. I'm going to be talking about the importance of libraries. We're going to be talking about summer travel and hopefully, hopefully, if I can pin them down, um, interviewing a friend of mine and their family as they have been traveling the country in their camper and seeing all kinds of places. So I'm hoping I can get that nailed down for this month, but it would be so fun to talk with them and talk about how their lifestyle of learning involves fun on the road and traveling and seeing great things. But today I am so honored because I have a special guest going to be on today with me. Um, my friend, Laura Miller, she has a po podcast called the Library Laura Podcast, and we're going to be talking all about fun books and things that we're going to be sharing. But I have a couple of fun things that I want to share with you because this is really important. One of them is my mug for today. As you know, every week when I come on, I have a special mug from my coffee cup collection that I like to share with you. And I was blessed by some very dear friends of mine, Charlie and Claire Davis over in the UK. They were traveling here through the States. They stopped by and had dinner with Michael and me and my sister-in-law Mindy also came from Kenya. And so they know what a royalist I am how much I love the queen. And so this week has been a fun week of celebrating the queen's platinum jubilee. So there's my mug. Look, it's dated on there. Look, oh, I don't know if you can see this. It says 1952 to 2022, celebrating Queen Elizabeth II and her 70 years on the British throne. So that's going on in history. And that's been going on. We've seen it on the news and the social media. 
but some of our kids may not necessarily know who Queen Elizabeth is. So I found something really fun, and I'm going to be sharing links to all of these resources in the show notes and in the broadcast comments. But this is from the Royal Collection Trust. This is a website from the UK. You can go to Royal Collection Trust, and they have resources for you to learn all about what the Platinum Jubilee is about, right? We There's the queen. She is 96 years old. Queen Elizabeth has been on the throne all of my life. And it's been fascinating to watch her over the years. She's seen so much history. She is respected around the globe as a world leader. Um, and so in her years of service, this is explaining all about the engagements. Members of the royal family are traveling um, and celebrating this week. All of the events started um, this week. And so they're celebrating throughout the weekend. So what is the uh, the, the Platinum Jubilee? It starts on, on June the 2nd and goes all the way through June the 5th. And it's a way that the country of England celebrates their monarch. There are resources here you can download if you are a teacher or if you're a parent and want to help your child learn. Because this is history in the making. We are living through a historical moment in time that may not happen again in our lifetimes. So this website takes you a little bit more into who the queen is, what her role is as queen. Most kids think of queens, right? And ruling and, and but what is her role? What is her actual role as the queen? So you'll be able to discover more about that. You'll be able to learn more about what a jubilee is. And there's lots of different things. There's even workshops that you can sign up to attend. There's a self-guided uh, visit where you can go through Windsor Castle. Uh, you can see how Buckingham Palace is celebrating. And you can also keep up with all the news about the Queen. So this is a great way just to help your children stay relevant with what's going on in the news today. And another fun thing that I thought about, you know, I checked out, um, I wanted to check this out because back when I was teaching my kids, we used to do a summer reading program. And that's what I'm going to be talking about today is the importance of summer reading. Why getting your kids involved in stories is so important. And that's why I wanted to have an expert. I wanted to have someone who is very knowledgeable in all things, um, grade school literature, reading books, and books that engage the young minds. So I am so excited and so honored to have my friend, Laura Miller, as a guest on the show today. Hi, Laura. How are you doing? Hi, I'm so glad to be here and I'm doing great. Well, it's so glad to have you here. Thanks so much for taking the time to join me this morning. I have just been uh, looking up all the different book lists that are out there, all the different fun stories that are being shared for students. So if you will just introduce yourself a little bit and share with uh, the viewers and even the listeners um, some of the fun things that we can be expecting for the summer or some of your favorite book recommendations. Okay. Yeah. So like she said, my name's Laura. I do have a podcast called the Library Laura Podcast. It is on a bit of a hiatus or just um, an unpredictable surprise schedule right now because I have a sweet baby boy who is going to be six months old tomorrow, um, who has Yay. delightfully turned my life upside down. <laughs> um, and I just, um, I don't have time anymore. I have a baby. So uh, yeah, it's great, but uh, it's just kind of changed the way that the rhythm of my life works. Um, but I started the podcast during the pandemic. It started April of 2020. And so there's 80 some episodes out there. Uh, so even though I'm not putting out more, there's quite, there's, that'll keep you busy for, you know, several right. hours at this point, right. if you start at the beginning of the catalog and work all the way through. Uh, and I talk about books that I've been reading. I talk to authors and other readers. Uh, basically, if it's somebody that I could talk to about books, uh, that was a person that I might talk to on the show. So there's there's quite the variety out there. So there's some. Uh, um, I, I interviewed a audiobook narrator, uh, a children's book illustrator, different things like Loved that. Loved those so, episodes. Those were great. They. Were I great. learned so much. Um, uh, listen, isn't it fascinating? Yes. So, so share, with me, share with me some of the things because your your episode on audiobook, uh, your audiobook narrator, and I cannot remember the name. Of, of the the person, but 
um, I used to work with HarperCollins Christian Publishing when they acquired Thomas Nelson and Zondervan and were going back through the back catalog and creating audiobooks okay. for books that didn't have them. Yeah. So uh, just share with me a little bit about what you learned. So the gentleman that I interviewed, he did like freelance audiobook narration. So he actually, he was working mostly on books that were available that needed audiobooks through Amazon. So they have like a whole kind of back system where you basically audition for narrating audiobooks and then the authors choose you or, or not. Um, mm -hmm. And he was, he was doing that freelance and uh, so, I mean, you need a pretty good sound setup. And then I think he was doing all of his own editing as well. But, I mean, you wouldn't have to. You could have someone else work with you on right. that as well. Um, and, yeah, I think just talking about the the challenges of narrating, like, fiction versus nonfiction. Because I hadn't really ever thought about it. Like, nonfiction, you can basically just read it. But maybe it's more complex, like, topics. And it's maybe harder to make it interesting and readable. Mm -hmm. um, and then fiction you have to do the voices a lot of times and so coming up with like a standard voice for that character and using it every single time consistently talking about how difficult that is and people actually doing like acting lessons to to be a good audiobook narrator um and then I after that conversation listened to Harry Potter on audio which I hadn't done I read it in physical form the first mm -hmm. time I read it um and just such a high respect for the gentleman that narrates that Mr. Dale, I think is his name. Um, okay. Yes. Anyway, he's yeah, like a Shakespeare actor and he did 200 distinct voices for the Harry Potter um, series, which I right. just like have mad respect for. Like I thought it was cool before, like, Oh yeah, well they're doing voices, but now it's like, Oh, Oh, that's and audio, but you know, and, and recording <laughs> audio books, is, is just so fascinating because, again, it was a new medium of a way to consume books, especially for people who are on the go, right? Yes. And when I was working for HarperCollins, um, we were doing that because this is when Amazon had developed that the WhisperSync technology, mm -hmm. which is where the ebook is linked to the audiobook so that if you purchase the ebook um, and you are reading through it, but you get in the car or some people get on trains, you know, and they're commuting into work and they want to continue their book. They can listen to it and it'll pick up right where you left off. And yeah. same with if you go. So that whole, all of that technology was so fascinating. And HarperCollins used to do all their work in-house mm. and then they contracted out to Brilliance Audio, which then became uh, a part of Audible. Okay. Which then became part of Amazon's group. So yeah. I was so blessed to be able to work just with them to understand the whole uh, creation, the audiobook process. And like you said, narrators that have to create those voices. I think for children, it's really fascinating because it really helps kids' imagination get there. Unless yeah. mom and dad read the story, you know, and some you read the story and you just read just, but when you can read them in different voices and help the children's imagination put those character voices to those pictures that they're seeing, it's just an added benefit to mm -hmm. reading a story. Definitely. Um, well, so while we're talking about like kids and reading and stuff like that, I will say parents and kids who are listening, if you're not already doing audiobooks, you're missing out. You should definitely check out audiobooks because they, they have them for all ages of books at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, and audiobooks count as reading. If you if you if you don't think that's true, I challenge you to challenge that assumption. I totally agree. It counts. Um, so you know, if you're driving in the car or you know have free time, if you want the kids to go and be quiet in their room, but they don't want to sit and read a book, they could listen to an audiobook and play with Legos or Barbies or whatever exactly. their toy is. This is a thing that you should take advantage of if you're not already. So absolutely. You well, know, when I even when I taught high school, I had some students, you know, audiobooks has really opened the door for students who have um reading disabilities. In other words, mm -hmm. they may be dyslexic or yeah. they may have some difficulty reading text, you know, even on a screen if it's in an ebook format. I had some uh several students who 
when we were doing literature and the literature got a little meaty for them. You know, here we are reading Charles Dickens or we're reading, you know, older American literature, a Benjamin Franklin's autobiography, you know, not the warmest read. However, when they were able to get the book on audio, it completely changed the world and their, their comprehension in some uh, levels really increased by having the audio version. So um, I know some people even in my book club, for example, their first go-to is to get the audio book before getting the hard copy uh, because, or even an ebook copy because they love having that. And their, like I said, their comprehension and the retention of the information even seemed easier with audiobooks. Yeah. I mean, I know, I remember in college unloading the dishwasher and listening to classic literature on LibriVox because I would literally fall asleep reading the book that I was supposed to be reading for homework if I was just sitting there reading it. I was a sleep deprived college student. But if I was like doing something and then listening to that, which I was supposed to be reading, I like, you know, passed the class. And that was a positive thing in my life. Right, so. right. Well, you know, as I was doing research for even programs and looking at, I was so excited to see this because uh, when I was teaching my kids, I used to participate in the uh, Pizza Hut Book It program. Yes, Pizza right? Yes. Yes. And so the Book It program is still around. I'm so happy to see this. So everybody, you can go to Book It Programs. Uh, let me see. It's bookitprogram.com forward slash programs. They give you ways to track your summer reading. And it's the same because you get a free pizza. I mean, what is better than reading and then getting pizza? Like, really? Right. Exactly. What could you want in life? So, you know, ages four to 12 can enroll. You can keep track of it June, July, and August. Parents can use, you know, we used to have little little things that they would give you certificates. We made a big deal out of it. We would have a pizza party with my kids and their friends because they all would read and mm -hmm. get to participate in this. So I was really excited to see that, that it's still around. Um, what a fun thing to do. Mm -hmm. um, what are some fun stories, Laura, that you've really enjoyed or some that you think would be really fun for a student to read this summer? Yeah, so I I went after we did our sound check yesterday, I went and grabbed a stack of books. Um, so this is by no means comprehensive, but I've got a nice little sample. Oh, I here love first, it. So. I love um, it. So for our younger age group, um, this is a fun one. It's uh, What Sounds Fun to You by Annie F. Downs. She is like the fun ambassador lady, and she wrote a whole book for kids that um it's, it's designed to help them figure out things that could be fun to do. And so this is not only a book that your kid could enjoy having fun reading, but then it's going to give them ideas on what Love else that. they could go do that's not reading the book that's also fun. So like, right. pretend you're a pirate on the wild seas or a clown in a three ring show. What good times can you have with what's in your mind? I mean, just, and the whole book is like that fun outside, fun in your imagination, fun inside on a rainy day, like all of these different things. So this is this is a great resource, but also just an actual fun read. And all Love of the, that, all of the kids are um, like actual kids that she knows in real life that she like gave pictures of to the illustrator to include in the book. And she did a whole episode where she interviewed all the kids and showed them which friends they were in the book. And it is such a dose of serotonin. It is so cute. Oh, I'll so, have to check that anyway. out. I love Annie. I, I love that. And honestly, I, I, I remembered that she'd released a book, so I'll have to go back and check that out. Uh, I might be a super fan. It's, it's possible. <laughs> um, she's a great person. She's a great person. Well, and she's also an Enneagram 7, and she's just a good example to me of what I can aim for as I grow up and try to be oh. a good, mature 7. So. I'm a 7 too. Yay! So, I mean, fun is like the ultimate priority, right? So, right. Absolutely. Uh, so then this book is good for all ages. Um, it's called I'm Just No Good at Rhyming and Other Nonsense. And it's poems. And so they're really short. You could read a few at breakfast. You could read a few on the way to the zoo or, you know, whatever. It's, right. it's They're short. They're funny. If you like Shel Silverstein, the, oh, it I kind of it has those vibes. Um, okay, great. It. It's, so it's kind of nonsensical, but but witty and fun. And um, I got it from the library and I liked it so much I bought it, which is always a good sign. Yes, um, libraries are the best. So I, there, I libraries are one of the only places that you can go for free right now. 
So even just if you're like, what do we do? Go to the library. You'll find Absolutely. something fun to do. And um, I'm like you, I love checking them out there because then I can see them. And if I really love them, then I can buy a copy. Yeah. Right. So, so oh, this great. one's, this one's fun. Um, and then I was thinking about my own, um, childhood reading and, um, I had many a happy hour. Yes. Hour the Rockstar children book. Great There's series. A, bazillion of them the nice thing for kids about series is if they like one they can just rip through the rest mm -hmm. of them and and just you as a one down and read it right can kind of let them go for a longer time without having to like the teeth pulling choosing of a new book is sometimes right kind of a challenge so if you find a series right. and they like it then you're good to go another fun series is any and honestly anything oh. by beverly cleary if your kids haven't read beverly cleary books um they're fun. They're, they're wholesome. Um, I listened actually, there's a, um, if you do audible, which I don't usually, but I had like an audible credit that I needed to use. There is a one audible credit. That's every single Ramona book all in the same, um, credit. Oh, for one credit. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's and fantastic. So it's, it's the whole Ramona series and it's narrated by Stockard Channing who does a brilliant job with it. It's so good. Okay. Um, so right after I finished listening to all of Harry Potter and I was still up every two hours nursing my baby in like January, I listened to all of the Ramona books and it was just really wholesome and lovely. Um, but I mean, there's the, the Henry and Ribsy books um, yes. are more for your boy readers and Beverly clearly, Beverly Cleary has just a bunch of really good ones. So um, great. Moving up the age range here. Um, if you're looking for just funny books, um, this Once Upon a Marigold is really funny. It's got lots of puns in it. And I'm a sucker for a good pun. Um, but it's a it's a love story, but it's very like like it's a middle grade love story. Um right. but first, an older first, reader. First little crushes when they, they decide that boys and girls aren't really icky. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But they send each other like messages using carrier pigeons and Aww. it's just really cute it's prince and a princess but um there's also some uh throughout the series you get explanations of the origins of the tooth fairy santa claus and the easter bunny maybe that okay. are okay. different explanations than you would normally get um and it's and you know that's great because kids about that age start asking those questions and start wanting to know and parents find themselves in those situations of like, oh, what do I say? Uh, if, if my friends listening have not read the Vanderbeeker series yet. Um, I saw you post about that and I'd never heard about this series. So you piqued my interest with this one. Okay. This is such a lovely family. It's a, it's a biracial family that lives in Harlem in okay. a brownstone. And um, they're just they're just so nice to each other and to all of their neighbors. And it kind of reminds me, you know, so it doesn't remind me of Amelia Bedelia or Paddington exactly. But, you know, the characters that like kind of get themselves into a pickle by yes. trying to do the right thing. But it just doesn't go right. Quite right. It's got a lot of that vibe to it, but it's just okay. Like, well-meaning kids trying to solve problems and ending up in pickles instead um and then working themselves out of it and it's really cute so um, well, i grabbed great. this one because um the Andrew Beakers, i'll have to check those out the series goes winter spring summer fall for the first four books so this is the summer one okay um but well, that would you, be a fun one to start with, right? If people were starting the series, would it be fun to start with the summer? I think one? you could. Um, you might want to start with the beginning um, just because you kind of get some backstory on the characters. But okay. um, they, I love it because like, um, it's got a little map of their house. Oh, how fun. And it shows you where like all the kids' bedrooms are and stuff like that. And uh, it's. It's got little diagrams and illustrations throughout. So I just want to go by. I love those. Like this is where they went on the subway. See, and, and those those things are so helpful because those maps are so simple and easy for children to read and understand. Yes. For them to get that beginning level of understanding geography. Yeah. And like here's the whole map of like the South Bronx and the Harlem Bronx. in the in the uh, end pages. I love so. that. I also so love a book with a good map. <laughs> me too. Oh my goodness, me too. The one we're reading with book club, it's got a map at the front and I was so excited to see that. So 
That's so fun. Right. Yes, I also love that. Um, and then the last one, this is one of my favorite books of all time. It's definitely for kind of the um, upper middle grade, lower YA um, audience. Okay. It does deal with some heavier themes of um, grief, loss of parent, a little bit of mental health kind of stuff, um, but in just a really beautiful way. Um, and I like to build this to adults as sort of a parable for Enneagram 7s. Um, because what Enneagram 7s want to do is run away from pain instead of face it and just go have fun instead. And what we should do is face our pain and walk through it and get to the other side of it so that then we can move right. past it and that kind of thing. So what happens is there's this girl named Coyote and her dad named Rodeo um, that have had a really hard time happen in their lives. Um, and they just take a school bus and turn it into an RV and start driving across the country literally running away from their problems. Um, and it sounds like it should be fun, but their problems are still kind of like weighing them down and chasing them. And so then there's this turning point where Coyote decides that they need to go back to their hometown and work through what happened. And, but she knows that she can't tell her dad that that's the plan. So she comes up with this like convoluted way to like get them back, but not tell him that they're going back. And they end up picking up this whole Motley crew along the way. So um, everyone from that. Um, a mother and son to a goat ends up on their bus at some point. Um, and it's a whole, it's a whole thing. It's about friendship and father daughter relationship, working through grief, adventure. It's a road trip story. Um, I feel like it would just be a perfect thing to read during the summer. So perfect for the summer. In fact, yeah, I mean, just I'm gonna I'm gonna run over here to my bookshelf because you just made me remember something that I have kind of in relation to that because I wanted okay. to see what your book re recommendations were before I made it made any because I knew you were gonna have a fun one. And guys, I'm gonna go back through uh, this video. I'll check with Laura too. We'll get the titles and and you know of all of these stories so I can put them in the comment threads and in the show notes right. so that you will have these books. But again, I mean your libraries are going to be the best places to start and, and also your local bookstores. Mm -hmm. They will also have reading programs going on. So I'm going to run over here to my shelf and grab something really quick. Cool. While she's doing that, I will put another plug in for library reading programs because um, I loved doing those as a kid. Uh, I didn't, I would have read anyway, um, but it's fun to get rewarded for the thing that you're, that you love to do anyway. And then it also works if you don't, love to read love to read as much um to have a bit more of an incentive put on that um so well, libraries again, that yeah really well Lib libraries are your great great place so uh, being an enneagram 7 and the kind of mom that i was um and my daughter's on here so she'll probably attest to some of this but um we always we always uh tried to have fun and so one of the stories when you were talking about uh, the story of Coyote Jennings, that made me remember the classic story of Around the World in 80 Days. It is such a fun story because you get to follow Phileas Fogg and all the members of his club as they try to travel around the, ro uh, the world on a bet. They place a bet to see who can do it first. And of course, you know, with kids, I mean, it's fun. They're always wanting to race. There's also a fun movie adaptation of this that's really fun. But when I taught this book and we read it for, these were like my, you know, late middle school, early junior high students. We also had a trail guide to world geography that we did so that while we were studying these things, we also learned about the places they were going. Well, when we did that, we also learned about the food. Oh, yes. So we would make, so this uh, book right here is called Eat Your Way Around the World. And so this is from a company called Geography Matters. And so they have recipes from, so you learn what tapas are, mm. you know, in Spain. Delicious. <laughs> gazpacho soup. My husband makes some incredible gazpacho soup. Mm -hmm. And so it was a way for, and you would earn, so you had a way to, um, let's see, you could make your own little, um, badges for when you, you know, it was just a fun little thing and we would collect them and trade them in our little reading group and learning all about the country. Oops. Where did Laura go? Oh no. Laura, come back. Oops. Where did, what happened? Did I lose her? Oh no. 
She'll come back in the stream. But anyway, this was a fun thing to do because then we had food and we had reading and we had map studies and we had all of that to well round out the story. It was so fun. There she is. Okay. I, 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 I know. I thought, did I accidentally... Did I accidentally pop you out? I'm so sorry. I don't nope. know how that happened. I'm pretty sure that the computer just decided we were done talking. Oh, okay. And we're not, so. Well, so that was fun. And then again, you know, there are so many different atlases. Again, maps.com, right? I got these from there. They have a world um, history atlas. They have a United States history atlas. So as they were traveling around the world, so as we're reading this book, and we're learning about it. And so I would, it was really fun because then I made the students only read certain chapters, right? Mm -hmm. To go through it that way. Well, it made them want to keep reading. They were like, oh, Miss Ronnie, can we please, you know, can we go ahead? I was like, well, like, but, no, you, know, <laughs> you can't read. You can't read, you know. But again, when you <laughs> make it fun for the kids, when you make it an adventure, not only are you teaching them, but they are learning some great ways to interact with others, to learn about different cultures, to understand other people. That's what we need to be doing with our kids to help them understand what's going on in our world, right? So I love the fact that Laura was sharing the series, The Vanderbeekers. I love that because it gives students a chance to really understand life in a different place. So maybe if you don't live in New York, maybe you've not ever been around people of other cultures. Um, that is a way for you to figure out how to learn about them, right? Because in reading stories, we're able to sort of understand our feelings, right? And discuss them and talk about them, Laura. Mm -hmm. Um, and because you have a new baby boy and I've even seen you posting and reading to him, um, do you notice a difference when you read stories to him? Yeah, I definitely notice different things. Um, you know, we're we're in the short board books uh, stage of things because sure. his attention span is longer than you would expect, but it's still short. Uh, right. And really, it's more like about how many words are on the page more than like how long the book is in some ways, because what he loves to do is turn the pages. And so if he can't turn the page pretty quickly. He's like, what, what are we doing? Um, right, right, he, right. he also loves the touch and feel books. We've gotten to where he can, he started at least going, wham, you know, we uh -huh. haven't gotten the fine motor control yet, but we're working on that. Um, and it's just been really fun um, to see how, I guess, calming and reassuring reading books is for him. Uh, sure. We went on a road trip recently and one of the best ways to calm him down while we were in the car was to just pop open a book and start reading it. And he would go from like, ah, to right, oh, like right. that. So um, I, I guess I am training up a little bookworm, which is exactly my goal. So Absolutely. I'm very pleased with this. Absolutely. I think, you know, p parents I don't think really understand the importance in those first few months, they're hearing your voice. Mm -hmm. They're watch. They're just the sound of your voice talking to them. And again, like you said, turning the pages. Oh, they're learning how to turn a page. They're learning how to do that. Then they get older. They'll be turning their own pages. They understand that process. It's those small steps of the fine motor skills that you're teaching him now that are going to really serve him when he gets to be two and three and four and even beyond, right? Yes. So I guess the other thing I wanted to make sure that I mentioned was um, graphic novels and picture books, um, because I think we move on too quickly from picture books and we undersell the value of graphic novels as books. Um, and so if you're a parent and you're taking kids to the bookstore or to the library this summer, um, Obviously, yeah, we want kids to read at and above their level and all of that kind of thing, but we shouldn't discount them picking up a book that is fascinating to them, whatever level it, it is. Right. I think we, especially right. during the summer, should let go of the level of things as much. They're reading. That's the point. They're having Absolutely. fun reading. Let them have fun reading. Their teachers can worry about getting them with the level books back at, at school. Correct. Um, that's the point. So um, picture books, especially like check out the nonfiction picture book biography section. 
you can learn in 40 or 50 pages about some famous influential person that you didn't know very much about. It's pretty, it's got nuggets of information, but it's not, you know, a 200 page right. you know, pictures, stuffy biography about the person, you know, um, right. there's really great ones about like, um, there's a one about Itzhak Perlman, uh, who has a disability and is a masterful violinist. There's one about Pura Belpre, who is the lady that the Children's Book Award for Latin American books is named after, but she was a Latin American librarian in the New York Public Library system early on. I mean, there's just, you never know what you're going to find out in that section. So that's a really fun section to look at. Um, and then graphic novels are books too. I'm just, I'm Absolutely. just here to be like, books are books today, but um, I've even noticed that they're doing graphic novels of classic literature. Like yeah. I saw graphic novel, graphic novel for Tale of Two Cities, for all that. So they're starting to do that because, again, the children of this generation, because of the digital age, are so visually drawn. And I think that really helps students, again, who are challenged with reading just flat text on a page. Mm -hmm. The graphic novels bring those books to life. They yeah. still get the nuggets and what they need out of the story. It's just in a different form. And so I love that. I think graphic novels are great. The Wrinkle in Time one is excellent. Okay. Um, there's a Anne of Green Gables one that's really cute. Um, yeah. That, so some of the classic adaptations into, um, into graphic novels are really fun. Well, um, I am, you know, when I go, when I... Uh, do some recording for my segment that I'm going to do on the library. I, now you have me interested in going into th those sections and spending some time looking at them and especially in the bookstores. Even I mm -hmm. love going to my local bookstore. I have a local bookstore here that I frequent. Um, they get to where they, Oh, hi, Renee, you know, <laughs> I, good to see you again, you know, but I love going in there, especially into the children's area and to the YA readers just to sort of look and see what is it that, that people are drawn to. I kind of watch and I even watch the kids see which books they're going over to pick up, which ones they're really drawn to. Uh, like you said, a book is a book. Let them explore, let them pursue their own interests. Um, and it's not just about even stories. There's books on how to do things. Yes. Like I have. So, oh, who can, for, who can forget Highlights Magazine? Oh uh, yeah. Oh my goodness. I had a subscription to this when I was a kid. My kids had a subscription to it. They are just fun activity books. Oh, get over here in the screen, Lonnie. Fun activity books. Oh, and this was like in every book you get like a, a fold out poster. Oh you know, man. Put it on their wall. Remember these? So this is like, so this is all are those about jellyfish. Yes. So this is all summer. And it says, you know, go with the flow, but then it says, can you pick out the 22 balloons hiding among the jellyfish? Oh, cool. So again, these are all, <laughs> I know, I was looking at it earlier going, wait a minute. Wait, Can I? I don't know. know. <laughs> uh, hold on here. So I mean, because again, you're working with those. And then on the back side, it says true colors. Can you find these eight jigsaw pieces in this photo of the woven basket? So I mean. Well, wow, they're again, sneaky. Those, right? Those fine skills of being able to just, to use their curiosity they're, they're quick little activities. There's puzzles, there's mazes, there's matching. There's some pages for coloring. I mean, so much fun. And then this was a book I had picked up. I was drawn to this book. I have been, I've had it by my desk and I continue to look at it. So it's called, it's the Barefoot Book Series and it's called Water, Whoa. A Deep Dive of Discovery. Dude, that looks cool. Oh man. So there are eight stories in here from different authors around the world. But when you go around, I'm just beautiful, but it's, it's almost, it's, it's almost like science meets yeah. story. Right. And so, um, and so, yes. So we have, so there's activities, there's experiments you can do. There are some pages um, when I get here, it's like a little deep dive page. And so you peel this up and there's more information under what? here. <laughs> right. I love books like that, that are interactive, that are like, Ooh, what's behind this little secret door, um, different stories from around the world. Um, tell it to Kalmare and the boy who remembered, uh, by, uh, uh, and you learn about Vanuatu. Oh, cool. And right. And so then, you know, then they get into maps where you learn about 
different places around the world, the major river systems. I mean, and it's all about water. It's all learning about water. And so I love a book like this. Um, and again, like I said, I've had it here by my desk where I'm just like, <laughs> oh, and Ooh, and let's see, and learning about ice molecules and what melts ice and molecules in motion, um, how water is, you know, evaporates and recycled water, how kids could learn how to, you know, be resourceful with water, how we use it, how our body, water is life, how our body is, my, you know, all that. So it's just, it's such a fun, informative book. It's not a science textbook but it has all the elements that your kids can learn, discover, do different activities. So I loved that one. And again, just so many fun things out there for our kids to read. And that's why summer reading is so important. So again, Laura, I, I could talk to you all morning. Mm -hmm. I know you've got a baby boy to get back to, but thank you so much. And by the way, I love your shirt. I love oh, thank your shirt. You. Yeah, yeah, it says, my weekend is all booked. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love I, that. I had to wear a book shirt for this. Absolutely. Absolutely. Choice. And I could, man, I could talk to you forever. So we'll have to do this again. But thank you so much because, again, summer reading, guys, get your kids out there. Make sure they are reading some great books. Engage them in these stories because this is how they're going to learn about the world around them. And as long as we're walking alongside them and pointing them to the good stories, Yes, where there may be some bad stories that happen in our world, even in stories that we read, kids getting in a pickle or oops, something happens, or even dealing with a topic like grief. Stories are a great way to work these feelings out, to have those conversations, and to always point our kids that every chapter in a story ends and a new one begins. And so helping them understand that and to understand that their lives are even a part of a bigger story is really fun. So I'm going to put all the links. I'm going to get with Laura. We'll get all the book titles, all of the, the links, everything to share with you all. But again, I just hope that this kicks off a great month of reading for you. Um, and if you want to join our book club, Laura is, in fact, Laura, you're reading the book that we're going to do next month. So I'll have to pick your brain about that because I'm excited. Well, but I might be finished with it by next month. So oh, that's great. <laughs> that's fine. That's totally fine. What I, because I was excited about it too. But this month we are learning about the dictionary of lost words. And this is a story based on the true events behind the men and also women who were involved with the creation of the Oxford English Dictionary. And so oh, you'll learn a little bit about the process of how they did it, how the words that we have come to know today in our dictionaries, how they got there and what words were left out and why. Mm. And so Esme, the little girl in this story, her father is one of the lexicographers who was responsible for creating the Oxford English Dictionary. And her job was to stay out of the way and not be in, you know, in the way when they were all working in what's called the scriptorium, the garden shed where these men met to put together the dictionary. And her job is to sit under the table and play, but not get in the way. Well, when she does that, she notices that sometimes slips of paper fall from the table and flutter down and she picks them up and discovers what these words are and creates her own dictionary of lost words. She saves them in a little trunk because these are words that were somehow, for whatever reason, omitted from the dictionary. So it's an intriguing story. I'm really excited to get into it. We love reading great books in the book club. If you all would like to join it and you're interested in joining, or if you just want to learn more about great stories, sharing great stories, and how to do to uh, to write your own story, maybe, you can find out more on my website at ronaharden.com forward slash contact. You can sign up for the book club. You can uh, send a message to me if you want to talk about maybe getting your story shaped up and put together. And also don't forget, you can find out Laura's podcast. You can find it on Apple or wherever you listen to podcasts. Go back through Laura's episodes. The one about the book narrator is really great. Um, she, she does a great job with the people that she talks to, the authors that she talks to, and you can get an idea of some of the fun literature 
that's out there for kids to read. Also, if you want to go back and check out any of my broadcasts that you may have missed, you can do so on my YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash Ronnie Harden. As always, Laura, so good to see you, my friend. I love you. I love what you're doing. The fact that you created a podcast during the pandemic, that's a whole nother conversation we'll have to have. <laughs> Sounds good. It was either that or go insane. So I'm glad I made a podcast. <laughs> well, I'm glad you made a podcast too, because now we can all enjoy it. Well, honey, have a great weekend. Uh, hugs to you and your family. Love that little guy for me. Um, and I'll see you on the grams. You can follow Laura on uh, Instagram at Library Laura. Um, and you can be join us back here next week or join me back here next week. I would love to have Laura back, but she's got other things to do. I mean, so. I would we'll come back. back yeah, yes. we'll be back next week because I'm going to be talking about the importance of libraries, how libraries function, what their purpose is, the history behind some really amazing libraries and why they're so important to use this summer. So guys, have a great summer season. Have a great weekend. And I'll see y'all next week, okay? Thanks a bunch. Thanks, Laura. See ya. Bye. Bye.